call to worship. We worship the God who inhabits our world and dwells our lives. We need not look up to find God. We need only to look around within ourselves, beyond ourselves, into the eyes of another. We need not listen. For this thunder to find God. We need only listen to the music of life, the words of children, the questions of the curious, the rhythm of a heartbeat. We worship the God who inhabits our world and who indwells our lives. Let us pray. Holy God, we come together to worship a people who would like to think that we love you with all our hearts and souls, with all our might. But there are so many other things in our lives that clamor for our attention that we often relegate you to Sundays and Wednesdays and some days of meeting and times when we want you to rescue us most of us really do want you to be the one in whom we live and move and have our being we really do want to hear your voice above all of the other voices in our lives but we get bogged down in the daily routine we forget who we are. We forget who you are. We forget what the church is supposed to be. So here we are, standing before you today with our human foibles and our short attention spans, asking that you'd make yourself known to us that you would help us to recognize the presence of the Holy One, that you would continue to challenge us, inspire us, and make us into the people you want us to be. Amen. And we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, when you are happy, what do you do? Clapping? Dancing? Shouting? Well, you could do or you can sing. How about when you are sad? What do you do? Crying? And? Do you clap? Hmm. You shout. How about when you are angry? What do you do? Shout it in there. Shout it. And then you can jump. And then uh, you can throw something. Hmm, something like that. How about when you celebrate, what do you do? Hmm. For me, for me, I can do all things with one. That is singing. When I'm happy, I can sing. When I'm sad, or something like that, I can sing it. When I'm angry, oh, something like that. And then, you know, all kinds of things. Because singing is the gift God gave us. So when we're singing, we can show our expression. Sometimes when we get stressed, 
we can do singing. When we lose our game, we can sing together. When we won the game, we can sing together. When we celebrate, we sing together. That is a singing. It's a very important, especially sing him. It's very good, very good. Have you heard? Uh, and I don't think in England hasn't done yet that. But in uh, uh, Netherlands, Netherlands, the nightclubs open, and then inside. People can go get in there, and there is uh, what you call called that the lights, coloring lights, uh, like a twinkling, and there is a DJ, is a music, and the inside hall there are people. Do you know how do they dance? Well, they have to keep the two meters away. How do they dance? Do you know how? Well, I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna play uh, a, a music. We are marching in the light of God. Yeah? I, I, I'm gonna be a DJ and you are gonna sing. What they do is in a nightclub, they put chairs two meters away all and they sit like that. And when the DJ plays music and they sing, the dancing like that. So, that is what we are going to do, yeah? We can dance, don't move away, <laughs> but as you see, you can clap here, you can, like that, you can move away, yeah? That is what we are going to, uh, oh, I miss one thing, but still we can get together now, but still what I'm missing is singing. Well, at home, I do. And in the morning, I listen to the Bible and then play you know, hymns and music and then on and sing it. But in here, well, that is one of the things I do most miss. But today, don't sing aloud. We are not allowed to sing it, but we can listen. But, Jim, is it okay? Oh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. That, that is what he says, so he's the boss. We are marching in the light of God. Moving, oh, we are moving in the power of God. 
Get out of breath. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? When you are sad, you can sing. It gets stressed out. And then you can express. That is what I do. And then that is the gifts God gave us. Thank you. Now, the Sunday school. Yeah, move. The Bible readings from Isaiah chapter 24, verse from 14 to 20. They raise their voice. They sing with joy. From the west, they will shout about the Lord's majesty. Therefore, in the east, honor the Lord. In the islands of the sea, the name of the Lord God of Israel. From the ends of the earth, we have heard songs. Glory to the righteous one. But I say, I waste away, I waste away. I'm doomed. Betray us, betray. Treacherously betray us, betray. Terror, trench, and trap upon you. Ruler of the earth. Whoever flees from the sound of terror will fall into the trench. Whoever climbs from the trench will be caught in the trap. Heaven's windows will open and the earth's foundations will quake. The earth is shattering, shattering. The earth is shaking, shaking. The earth is tittering, tottering. The earth trembles like a drunk and shudders like a hut. Its rebellion weighs heavy upon it. It will fall no more to rise. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, I'm going to play another hymn. So you can just listen, or you might just humming or something like that. To God be the glory.
I downloaded from YouTube one of, I think it, it looks like, you know, more than 10,000 people gathered. It's like, you know, uh, what's a hippodrome or, you know, a big concert. And there was uh, a bottom bit, there's a galleries and above the other galleries and they sing together. It's a great. Well, as you guess today, the theme of or message, what I want to say is about singing hymn. Well, that is what, one of the things we miss. Because, well, you know, sometimes people say to me, well, after right away finishing the service, came up to me and said, oh, James, your voice is too loud. So just, you know, turn off the mic or don't sing it. We can't hear my voice or something like that. Well, one of the things is, I always choose the hymns with connected with the theme. So before the reflection and after reflection, you know, I, I want to, you know, you know, something draw from the bottom of my heart, you know, something, the feelings and, you know, the, the spiritual feelings through the hymns. If I don't sing like today, something like that, I don't feel any kind of things. But when I sing hymns, I can feel it. What am I going to say? And then, you know, I feel the, the power of the Spirit, that kind of thing. But at the moment, we can't do that. Well, you know, I thought I might take off my you know, a shower screen and put it in front of you here with the, you know, pillars <laughs> and then I can sing, <laughs> even on my own, <laughs> so that, that kind of thing. Well, that is kind of things were amazing. And then today, that is, well, as you heard the Bible text today, well, actually, hold the story, chapter 24. Well, actually, from Isaiah chapter 24 to 27 is talking about God's judgment, the end of the day. Well, people and the world dreams of paradise, better world, better life, more money and better job, a luxury holidays, good brown materials, and good food. But on the other hand, there are a lot of dooming stories, horrible prophecies, movies, novels, personal predictions, talking about the end of the world and judgment. A few days ago, I just happened to see that one of the movie, which is a model engine. Have you seen that? Well, the movie is about, uh, uh, what is it, 2041. Year 2041, the world has destroyed and there were a few survivors. And then how they are going to live and fight each other and all kinds of things. Have you seen that the word is always Armageddon? Am I right? Armageddon? A-R-M-A-G-E-D-D-O-N Yeah, have you seen that movie? Well, how about Deep Impact? The day after tomorrow. A lot of movies are talking about the end of the day, the judgment. Many doomsday theorists exist as to how the world may cease to be. Metals, nuclear war, viruses, a series of huge natural disasters, or aliens. Well, if you go, you know, after service, when you go back home, you can Google it. And then you will discover that there are folks and people who have declared that this year, 2020, is 
the end of earth. Well, there are so many years. Do, do you remember the, what is the, uh, 2,000 millennium books? Do you remember that? Yeah, millennium books. And then time to time, a lot of people talked about the judgment and then the end of the world. But you know, Jehovah Witness, they are one of them. And there was 2010 and even 2020 is to the end of the day. And then before that, and also a lot of people talk about 2030, 2040, and then all kind of things. How about this year, 2020? Well, not much we have the kind of things. You, you've seen hails, yeah? H how big you have had? How big? I would say like that, that much is the, my biggest one. But have you seen this size, egg size? That, that size? It's not in winter, but just a few weeks ago. In August, in China, there was hail from from the sky and destroy cars and houses. That egg size, that, that size. How about tsunami? And how about flood? Have you seen the flood in China? Three months again and again. A lot of places, houses, and then you know, UNESCO places and historic places, they flooded and destroyed all. How about hot weather? Well, it's nothing to do with uh, you know, our country. But have you seen that or heard that, what is that in Russia, the Siberia area? When we had a 24, they had a 35 degree. Melting the snows and all kinds of things. The same weather changes. And suddenly, in the winter, we have hot weather. In summer, suddenly we have a cold weather. Sinkholes, melting glacier. In Greenland, the glaciers are melting. In Alps, Switzerland, Italy, and this side, a lot of glaciers are melting. Sinking coastlands, virus, Ebola, Flenza, and SARS, and now we have the COVID-19, and all kinds of things. I don't know. Is it the end of year? Well, we don't know yet. We don't know. The fact is, nobody knows. That, that is for sure. Even Jesus said, I don't know. Only Father knows. And that is what the Bible says. Bible also talking about the end of the day. The end of earth. Especially today. The Bible text. Chapter 24, 25, 6, and 7. It is like, you know, the, the camera zooming out. It starts with the Judea. And then the surrounding area country. And last, zoom out to focus on whole earth. The earth is shattering, shaking, tittering, tottering, trembling, and shattering. The heaven's window was open. It's talking about the end of story. Horrible story. But the thing is, in the middle of that chapter 24, suddenly there are people who sing with joy from the east to west the end of the earth the islands of the sea everywhere there are people who 
are singing. What is that man? What well, verse 13 it is it is talking about like when we harvest in our olive trees or grapes, they always leave some behind the remains. Like that, there are remains, remnant. And they will sing the Lord's majesty, glorify the name of God. On the other side, the people who are singing, they are God's people who got love. And also, those who God loves sing. You know what I mean? In the Bible, there is a 66 books in here. The Bible says about the end of the earth. But that is not God's concern. Quite often people misunderstand God. And God is justice. God is you know, very tight and bold and punish people. But when you read the Bible, no, there is very small parts of that. But a lot of parts, almost as God is talking, God's story is talking about savings. That's why when Jesus came, one of his nicknames is Life Giver. God sent his son Jesus Christ to save us. That is God's aim. That is God's purpose. And also, that is what we are created. God created us to save others, to help others. And in here, those named remnant, those remains, those God's people are sing with joy. And also sing from west, east, the end of the earth, and also the islands of the sea. That means is wherever they are, whatever they have got their situation or tribulations and stress and trials. Whatever, whatever it takes, they always sing with joy. Do you like singing? It doesn't matter whether you sing well or not, whether you can play any kind of instrument or not. It doesn't matter. But from, from your bottom of your heart, you like singing, humming. Do you have like that? That's why in the Bible, especially Revelation, when we get to heaven, all is gone. But one thing from here to there, same thing. That is singing. That is singing. Ministers, there, was, there will be not. Elders or cleanings or eating, any kind of thing, there won't be. But only one thing, singing. That is the gifts God gave us. Whatever our situation, whatever tribulation, whatever we have faced their hardships. One thing we must remember that is singing. When we sing, the sadness go away. When we sing, the joy spread. Spread like germs, like a, like a virus to other people, so that those who hear our singing, they also rejoice. That is the, what the Bible, Isaiah chapter 24. Sing with joy. Sadly, we can't sing in here at the moment, but remember when you go back home, especially today, yeah, at least choose one. You know, what is your favorite or any hymns? 
Well, nowadays, as long as you have got an internet or smartphone, you know, nowadays we don't need to buy any modern hymns or any kind of things in, in YouTube. You can you know, play on and loud and you know, nobody interrupt you, nobody you know, you know, told you off, tell you off, but you can turn it on and sing like uh, what you know, we did, like dancing or what kind of things. When we sing, there is a God. When we sing together, there is God. And then that is the character, the remnant, those who God loves, sing. Let us pray. God of all mercy and compassion, life and death are in your hands. God of our salvation, you have ordained that we should serve you in serving one another. Look upon this nation, burdened at this time with many cares and anxieties, with the infection, sickness, and untimely death. Grant us grace to walk together with honest and faithful hearts, each caring for the good of all, the striving first for your kingdom and its righteousness. We may have added to us all things that we need for our daily sustenance and the common good. Hear our prayers in this time of illness and infection, of isolation, fear and uncertainty, for the sick and those weighed down by pain, distress, loneliness and anxiety. Especially we pray for Will, Kath, Jessica Mandy, Rose Mac, Jill and Sophie Jill and Miriam, Patrick Nigel Owen, and for all those known to us who are in special need of our prayers, give them the strength and courage to carry on and hope for the future. For all who care for them, conscious of the risks they bear, and for those who have responsibility for public health and social order. Hear the cry of the afflicted and let them be comforted so that all who suffer may come to know that they are joined to the sufferings of Christ who gave his life for the salvation of the world and by your blessing on them and those who care for them May they be restored according to your will, to soundness of body and mind, and offer you joyful thanks in your Christ and Church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. And as you go from here, remember this as followers of Jesus Christ. We have not received the spirit of fear, but one of hope and confidence. For we are children of God, members of God's own family, and as with Jesus Christ himself. So go out with joy to love and serve the Lord, now and forever. Amen.